Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the Easy Wool Stitch Blanket just like you see today. This is an easy level project but the way to get started is a little more complex but once you get started it's off to the races we go. So without further ado let me show you how to operate the loops and then we're gonna go through the beginning stages on how to get yourself set up. So here's what we're gonna be playing with today. The Bernat Alizé easy wool. Now when you slide off the ball band I would give your balls a good shake. So just slide it off and just massage it a bit and just make it all roughly and shake it out. It will loosen off all these loops for you so it'll be easier to play with. So just uh, take out the ball bands and just give your balls a good shake. So here's an example of the project and I did a small swatch of it and you can do something like this too. So what you want to do is get yourself set up but when you set up you don't have a lot to work with but once it's started you have the weight of the project in front of you. So what you wanna do whenever you're knitting, finger knitting, you wanna put the yarn so it's coming towards into your hand so you can sweep it up or push it into the stitches just like this. So in this case I am going to just sweep it up. So the first three stitches, everything is in three. So if you can count to three, you're good. So you just count in threes. So the first three come in from the back. So just pop it through the forward like so. And what I found with this one here, because we're gonna be knitting and purling, that when you go and do the purl which is next, you wanna drag the yarn so it's in front laying on top of the project and you're gonna take the loop and you're gonna push it back into the hole like this. And you do one, two, and three. The trick is is to make sure you use up every loop. So when you're using this for the first time it's kinda hard to see those loops but your eyes get used to it. So once you do, you did the purl, you push it to the back and then you take the next loops and you suck it up through the front or through the back to the front once again. So every third stitch changes its location like this. So that was one, two, three and now you're just gonna pull this in front and then you'll take the next loops and then you'll suck it through the stitches going to the back. Now I'm making this look easy because I am fabulous here on camera today. However, once you do get started it does get easier so I'll just keep it a little bit serious today. So you're gonna go all the way to the back. Once you get all the way to the back, this project you never turn but you might wanna go through your project and just kinda pull up on those loops they won't fall out and just get, give them a good pull, check it out, make sure that they work and the goal here is to make sure they're not twisted in any kind of weird way. So if you feel like it's got a weird twist just untwist it but you can always correct that later and we have other tutorials on how that's done. So you just wanna go back through. So you're just gonna go back through the project and now take this yarn strand and go on the other side. Now I've already shaken out this ball so everything's kinda nice and loose and ready to go and in this case the first three are going to be purling so I'm gonna lay it down on top of the project and take the next available loop and push it to the back side in the first three. So one, two, and th three time is a charm. Just take your time, video format, I'm kinda rushing but um, behind the scenes I would just take my time. So the next ones are coming from the back so that's a regular knit stitch. So you're just gonna come from the back and suck it through the forward. So just bring it through the forward like that. All right? So if you can remember to go forward and back it, you're laughing in order to make this work. So every four rows you're going to change the direction whether you're going from the front or the back side. So this is what we're gonna do. So you can see this looks different from here. So this here we're gonna go from the forward. So bring it to the forward on top of your project and push it back through the loop. So grab a spare piece of paper and I want you to write down the numbers one through four and put a column. So every time you do one of these uh, a whole set you, the next time you're gonna go you're gonna change the direction to give you this basket weave look. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to count the number of loops that we have. So you're just gonna count right away. Make sure that the yarn is cut right just before the first loop here. If you're not feeling safe or comfortable with that you can just kinda pull it out and then you can use this strand here to weave it in the ends. We have other tutorials available on knowing how to do that. So the goal here is that we need to count 63 loops. 
Now if you want this pattern and you want to change the size, you're gonna count in sets of, sets of, <laughs> in sets of six. So you just count the loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Is it wide enough? Yes or no? If it's not, do another six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Wide enough? Yes or no? If not, I'm gonna do one more set of six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now because this is a basket weave, you're gonna wanna add three more um, uh, loops to this. So just go one, two, and three. So this is where I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna put a crochet hook in here while I yap at you. So you wanna have it all set up and ready to go. Now the secret to doing this is to make sure that your balls that you have is nice and relaxed. So just uh, give it a bit of a massage and release some of the yarn on the table in front of you and have it go in the direction. So I'm going to knit in this direction. So have this ready and so it's going off to this side. So when I'm knitting on this side and going here, I'm going to shift the ball so that it's on this side. So you wanna keep an eye on your yarn ball. So we're going to begin immediately on this side of the project. So let's begin and I have the yarn. I'm just gonna now put it across. I want the yarn to be available in front of the project or behind the project depending on the stitch that I'm about to do. So we're gonna be combining a knit stitch with a purl stitch. So if it's the knit, it's coming from the back and it's sucking up through the loops and if it is the purl stitch, it's gonna be from the front and then pushing it into the loop. So let's begin and I have the first one already marked. So the first three are going to be a knit stitch. So just keep the yarn in behind leading to the yarn ball. This is my project yarn. So I wanna take the next available loop and I'm gonna take out my hook and I'm gonna take the next loop and just feed it through the, the back to the front of the first one. And I wanna keep an eye I, always on the yarn ball one and the project strand. So now just get the next loop available on the project and then the next loop available on the one leading to the ball and go from the, the, the back to the front and then we're gonna take the next one and do the same thing. So everything is in sets of threes. So just one, two, three, one, two, three. So those three were the knit stitch. So the next three are going to be a, a purl stitch. So just think about one, two, three, it's a waltz. We're just one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we're gonna do the next three as the knit stitch. So the difference now is that this yarn right here leading to the ball has to come in front of the project and you're gonna take that loop and the next loop that's available on the project side, you're just gonna feed it through the front and take it to the back. And you're gonna do the waltz. So you do one and then take the next loop and the next loop, two and the next loop and the next loop and three. And then once the waltz is done, you're going to switch that yarn for the yarn ball back to the back side and the next three for the project are gonna be fed from the back to the front. And you're gonna do that all the way across. Just be patient. This does take a little bit of practice. I'm not gonna deny that for you today. Um, so those came in from the front. So if you wanna look back on your work, you can just pull up on those loops and to make it a little bit more clear for you. And as it gets bigger in your, in your um, project, it's a lot easier to manage. So those came from the uh, back to the front. So that means that we're gonna change the dance and we're just gonna take this yarn strand that's leading to the ball and this is the project and the next available loops we're gonna bring from the front to the back. Do you think you got that to go all the way across? Everything's in sets of three. The goal is, is to not leave any loops behind. So realistically speaking, this is my second take for doing this because I left a loop behind in the beginning. So then switch the partner and then taking the next project side from the back to the front. It's nice to be able to prepare these tutorials and show perfection in every time, but as a crafter, it's, it's important to be able to identify mistakes and also be able to correct. So we're just gonna keep going back and forth across the line.
So eventually you'll come all the way to the other side and so I'm just gonna change the dance partner and put it in behind. So I'm just gonna take this yarn strand now and the last three are going to be from the back to the front and that'll allow the project to stay looking in balance. So when you have it laid out on your bed or a couch it'll look like it's balanced. And so the last three come from the back to the front. So just lay down the project and you should see the dance. So you should see three here knit and then the next three here are purl. The next three are knit. So if it's looking like this just pull up on those strands. Don't be scared. They're meant to be touched and then those three are in the back and so on. So now what we want to do is that we wanna focus on going back in the other direction. So we have to change the location of the yarn ball. So give it a good shake. Just free it up a little bit and just lay the yarn down in front. So we either going to push it back into the project or we're gonna suck it out through the project this way. Let's move on to row number two. So on your spare piece of paper check off that you did uh, number one and every time you get four done you're gonna change the lo lo locations of going either front to the back or back to front. So let's move on to row number two. So let's begin to do the next one. So this is row number two. So getting the line that goes to the yarn ball just lay it in front or in behind. In this case the first um, three are a knit stitch. So leave it in behind for the first three. So take the next available loop and feed it through the back to the front. So one and what you need to pay attention to. See this? Let me just zoom you in a little bit closer so you can see that. So see this when I was about to do it it looks like it's got a twist. So look at where it's doing the join and you can see when it's twisting and when it's not. If you accidentally twist this you can always fix it later and there's videos on how to do that. So taking the yarn from the back to the front. So the first three is the knit stitch like so. So it should look like the row below. Now the next three are the purl stitch. So taking this yarn bring it to the front side of the project and then just do the same thing. So make sure it's not twisted. Look just look at where things are and again you can always fix it later if you have to without having to take it apart like the whole thing apart. So I'm just going from the front to the back like that. Now the next ones, the next three are the knit stitch again. So moving the yarn to the back and just feeding it through. This yarn actually looks a little bit like cotton, uh, cotton candy. It's really soft to play with too. So the knit stitch was just done for three and the more you get in your hands the more this project will sit down and behave for you. So see here I've left out a loop that's not been played with. So in order to do that you have to do it now. Don't wait. You just have to take out what you just did and just restart that again. Again it'd be awesome to do a perfect tutorial where nothing is ever out of alignment but um, perfection doesn't exist. There you go. So you might wanna turn it around once in a while to make sure that there's no loops that are not used. So now the next three are the purl stitch. So bring the yarn in front and just feed it from the front to the back. One and after you get used to this yarn it's actually not hard to work with at all. And then the more you get on it the more this will sit down and behave itself as well. So at this part of the tutorial I thought everything was messed up at the end. So the end here because it's just starting was looped around so it was just twisted. So just make sure you kind of untwist things and make sure that it just is available to you. So the very final three stitches will each be a knit stitch coming in. So it's from the back to the front. And remember kids if you're watching this you know us adults we don't always get it right the first time. This wasn't the first time I just demonstrated this to be honest with you. And uh, you know it's just a matter of being able to uh, recognize mistakes and to be able to pull it if you have to. Now go back to your project and just lay it down on your table and just pull up on those loops and it will be a little more stable. And the more you can grow this out the more stable it will be on your table so that you can keep on um, making your blanket. 
but it's getting easier now and we're now going to move on. So on your sheet of paper just check off that you did row number two and then let's move on to row number three. So let's move on to row number three. We're gonna switch the yarn ball so it's on the other side so it's over here. So I can either bring in the yarn or push it back in. Now this is row number three so we're gonna maintain what we already know. So it's just gonna matter be the first three will be a knit stitch from the back to the front. And now that we have more in done you'll see that it has the weight and that it will sit down properly for you when you're going to play. So the next three are, in it, are the purl stitch so bring the yarn in front and push the loops in behind. So honestly uh, in this particular project um, you need to get to row number three before you really can start um, blazing away. So you just gotta take your time in the first one and, and two rows in order to, to do this. So that's the three done. So there's the waltz and now the next three will be a knit stitch. So just switch the location and then just bring it from the back to the front. So please do this all the way across and then I'll see you at the end. Again just keep on looking to make sure there's no weird twists and I'll show you how to fix that later in this tutorial as well. So continue all the way to the end of the row just exactly what you know. So you're either knitting or purling in sets of three. So the last three loops are what we already know. So they're a knit stitch just coming in from the back to the front and that's it. So now you'll wanna take your little sheet of paper and you wanna check off that you just did box number th or number three. So we're now moving to number four. So we're gonna do number four. It's exactly what you know. So you can see what is the knit stitch here and what is the purl. So we're just gonna maintain what we know. So from the back to the front again and we're doing the first three as a knit stitch and then bring this yarn to the front side and then push it back through those stitches. Like so. So you already know what you're doing at this point hopefully and you're just gonna maintain the next three are the knit stitch so it's gonna be from the back to the front and continue that all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end and the last three are going to be a knit stitch. So one, two and the final one is the third. So now row number four is complete. So just kinda go through, just pull up your loops, you know, enjoy the journey as we're going across. Let me just back you out. So you can see the back and forth uh, motions it's actually done a pretty great good job. Just fix anything that needs to be fixed and I will show you how to be able to fix mistakes. So right now I'm looking at it and I don't see well actually right here. So there's a mistake right there. Do you see how this stitch looks different than this stitch? How you can get rid of that is that you can undo just this whole line. So you can just undo right above it and then above it again and then this is the one that's messed up is right here. So what you can just do is untwist it and then put everything back in. So from the back all the way and just keep on going. So if anything that looks like it's got a weird twist to it you can just sit, uh, go back through the stitch work and go right down in order to fix it. It looks like that was the only one I did. So it looks pretty neat right? So this is the end of row number four. So row number five, six, seven and eight. So five, six, seven and eight is going to be doing rows number one through four again but we're gonna change the location of the stitches so that it can look like it's basket weave. So let's begin the next set of four. So it's really easy to be able to change the locations. We can see what is knit and we can see this is purl. So in row number five is that we are going to change the location. So instead of this coming making it a knit stitch we're going to switch the yarn again to the other side and we're gonna make the first three as a purl. So just bring it in front and you're gonna come from the front to the back. So we're changing the direction of the stitch work in order to create the basket weave. So the first three just went as a knit stitch and so the next three that is currently the purl is that we are going to access it and make those now from the back side going forward. Do you get that? It's just opposite to what's already there. So this will be row one of four. 
uh, when you're doing your counting. So the next three you can see that they're in the knit stitch but now we're are the knit stitch but now we're gonna make a purl. So we just bring it to the front side and then push it back through the loops. And so you're changing that. So I want you to do that all the way across. This is row number five but I just put on my sheet one, two, three, four. So this would be technically uh, row number one of four. And keep doing that all the way across. So once you get all the way across the last three are going to be opposite. So there was a knit stitch last time but this time it'll be going in here. Once you get this pattern established it really does fly along really quite quickly to make this blanket. It's just a matter of getting yourself started and ready to go. So I feel like I'm, I'm at that point where I'm just starting to fly and of course for tutorial reasons I have to slow down. So we're gonna then, that's row number one of four. So take that sheet of paper and check off that you did number one and let's begin to do row number two. So row number two we're gonna maintain what we just did. So the other ones here we did a purl stitch and this is knit so we're gonna keep it as a purl. So let's get our yarn and keep it for a purl so from the front to the back. And then the next one you can see that we've just started creating the knit stitch last time so this will be from the back to the front. So you're gonna do this all the way. This is row number two and I will see you at the end of this row. Pretty right. So I'll see you at the end of the row. So the last three stitches become a knit stitch just like they did in the row below. And this will be row number two of four. Like so. So grab your sheet of paper and that's two and now let's do number three. So we're gonna match exactly what we see. So the first three here are a knit stitch. So we're going to then just start from the front to the back again. Um, change the location of the yarn. It's just easier. So the first one's done. And just maintain what you already can see. And I'll see you at the end of this row. So the first three are knit. Or sorry, our purl stitches and then the next three here are the knit stitch. So continue all the way across. So I'm coming all the way to the end and the last three are a purl stitch. Like that. So yeah. We can see that. So it is a double sided project. So that was row number three. So row number four is still the same thing as what we already know before we switch back and do it just like we had been before. So the first three, let's get our yarn moved over to the other side. So the first three will be the, the purl stitch. And the next three are knit. So do this all the way across. You already know what you're doing at this point and then we're gonna switch back directions then as we continue to do the next set of four. Coming all the way to the other side the last three are a purl stitch. And so you're gonna check that off on your box that you've got those done. And again you can pull up at any time. So you will notice that if you give this a good pull it actually gets longer because the stitch of the loops is determined by uh, like the length of the loops is depending or the length of the stitch is depending on the loops. So now take this box thing and you're gonna check off that you did number four and now you're gonna start off with number one again. So one you have to change the direction again. So we've been doing the purl stitch on the end. So now we're gonna go back and start doing the knit stitch. So starting from the first one you go from the back to the front again and just change the direction in which the yarn is going into to give the look of the funnel of the box. Like that. So then the next three here it's a knit so this time it's gonna be a purl and do that all the way across. So that's all you just need to do is just keep repeating these four rows over and over and then you keep switching every fourth row 
every uh, time you get a set of four done and then you can have something like this. And eventually you'll come to the very end of your project. So let's say uh, just verify on how to finish this off. Now we do have videos on how to change the uh, the yarn strands because eventually you will run out as you are getting to the close to the end. So how to do that is just you just tie it in a knot and then you just uh, you just open up a couple loops. So we have a video on how to be able to change over your yarns and midway through and then you just hide the, the weaving uh, the ends into the project itself. So you literally just tie a knot. So you'll notice that each one of the loops pretty much meets at the bottom. So you're just gonna open up a few loops maybe two or three and then just tie it and then just have the yarn strands just weave in and out of the work. Let's uh, review on how to finish off. So eventually you'll get to where you need to finish off. So this is where I'm finishing off. So this is where I'm gonna end. So that means I have to start on this side. So if I was the other way for example like this then I will start here and finish off wherever the yarn is going to be finishing over here. So to do this you're just gonna take the first loop here and feed the second loop through and hold the second loop. You're then gonna take that loop and then grab the next loop up and feed that one through and then grab the new loop and, and carry it across. This is called the bind off and what you're doing is you're finishing off all this and you're just gonna do that all the way across. At the very end of this row you're just gonna cut two loops open and then you're gonna tie the last loop into the project itself and just hide in the yarn strand. So make sure you get up every loop that's available to you when you're gonna do that. So you see it's nice and finished. And then eventually you'll come to the very end. So this loop is left. So what you're gonna do is just your snip your yarn probably about two loops away and then just snip the yarn underneath the loop and this strand will open up and it will be much longer. And you're going to use this strand here and tie this to the project and then just weave in the ends of this inside this binding. So just take that and just maybe use a crochet hook or your fingers and just feed it through and then it will be on the inside here. So this would be what it would look like. So you got a nice finishing off here. You got a great finishing off right on the top and this would be how you would do this kind of project and it is double sided as you can see. This here starting strand you just wanna weave it in through the work as well. Just bring it in and the more you can weave it in without changing the stretch um, the better that it will be so it won't pop out on you. And if you wanna tie it in a knot and then just um, snip it right uh, at the knot itself um, you can probably do that as well. So you just wanna weave it in and out of that the base like so. So that's it for today. Have a good one and we hope to see you again really soon and I'm going to pull this apart and get ready for my next project. So I'm going to show you how to join new yarn. So I wasn't technically done this particular piece but if you're running out of yarn you will end up with your final loops that you see. So you don't wanna use all the loops right to the very end into your project. You wanna leave a few empty and so all you're just going to do is just turn it upside down and just sink your scissors in between the loops and just being able to open them up. Okay, so you're gonna only open up as many as that are not in the project. So in this case there will be three. So I'd probably only do two if I was planning better. So these, this strand here is going to be left over and we're going to deal with it later. So you're going to grab your new yarn from a new ball and if you have any damages inside the ball that one of the loops is broken this is how you would do it as well. So you're just gonna open up probably two loops and what you wanna do is really quite simple is that you wanna look at the distance between these loops. See it's not very big. So you're just gonna take the one strand here and the other one and you're just gonna tie it together in a knot. Just like that. Okay, so then you can just leave this aside for now and then you can continue to do your easy knitting. So what then I would do is then you're going to take your darning needle and you're going to put those strands through the project and just weave them in and just hide them so that they get stuck and I'll show you that in a second. So I'm now continuing then with my new ball of yarn. And 
and it's like I haven't even cut it at all. So it won't even show. So what I'm gonna do then is that I'm going to just grab my darning needle and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get rid of these ends. So this doesn't have to be cut at the end of the line. It could be in the middle as long as you can take your darning needle and hide that. So let's do that next. So using your darning needle, all you're just going to do is take your two ends and then you're gonna feed it through. So you're gonna need a thicker darning needle in order to get your strand through. And you wanna either favor one side or the other, it doesn't really matter. You can just choose. Now if you're doing like the stocking knit stitch or whatever, where everything is looking on one side, you wanna concentrate on the back. So you're just gonna pull that through and then you're just gonna go back in the other direction. And once you're satisfied with that, I probably recommend three times if you're, three times is a charm. You wanna do it so that you're not impeding any of these loops and then you're gonna cut that right down. So you're gonna cut that right down into the project so it doesn't ever show up again. And then you're gonna take and do the same one, same thing to the other one that's available to you. Just weave it in and out and therefore you'll never see the stopping and starting of, of a yarn ball. So let's cover binding off, casting off, finishing off. Let's get it done. So what you wanna do is that you wanna concentrate to the side where the strand is going. So you can bind off this way or that way. It doesn't really matter. So what you wanna do is that you want to take your last one. So if this is over here, you're going to start here and you're going to just pull it up and take the second loop and pull it through and just hang on to that second loop and just pull it to the maximum that it can pull out. You're gonna take the next one and pull that through that one. And you're gonna continue to do that all the way across your project, just like that. And you're gonna get to your very last one. So now what do you do? Well now you can just cut your yarn here. So what I do is that I, I would cut two uh, loops away. So cut on the opposite side of the two. Now you're gonna take those two loops and you're gonna open them up. So just coming down into the base don't cut like in the middle of a, a loop. You wanna cut down to the base because that's where the strand is attaching. So you'll feel it with the scissors. See, and it's just opening up. So cut down and there you go. So you're gonna take that strand and just feed it through the final loop and that will help lock it but you're not quite done. So what you're going to do is take this strand here and get your darning needle and feed it through. Okay, I always favor going to the back side and just feed it through the stitch work. Try not to feed it through anywhere that it's gonna become obvious that it's sitting there. Okay, so just pull it but don't pull it to the point where it's gonna warp your project and then simply go in the other direction. And I would do that a total of three times. That's why I'm cutting two loops apart. Three times is a charm. Therefore you can just safely now cut it and you're good to go. That was how you bind off and if you left an extra long strand at the beginning then you can just take the same thing, take, put it through the darning needle and just feed it through as well. So that's how you do the bind off. Mm -hmm.